Hi, I'm Richard Fuzniak, also known as Fuzzy, and I'm webmaster for Robert Bovell. I'm talking with him today about his new book he's working on called Black Genesis. Hello, Robert. Hi, Fuzzy. Yeah, I'm glad you're uh, raising uh, the, the question about my next book, which is going to be co-authored with Thomas Brophy, the American astrophysicist. Uh, Tom and I got together a couple of years ago uh, because of a discovery that was made in the Sahara, which has now taken us on a huge research project, and it's culminating in this book that we're about to begin writing and should be available in, a, in about seven or eight months' time. Uh, as the title implies, Black Genesis, uh, let me say from the outset that uh, we are going to put evidence, uh, hard physical evidence, that will show that the ancient Egyptian civilization uh, is the result of the incoming of another culture uh, that lived in the Sahara, uh, what uh, the Egyptians call today the Western Desert, uh, of black origins, a prehistoric culture that had developed all the requirements of civilization that we had previously thought uh, w was attributed only to the ancient Egyptians. So this is basically the, the task of this book, is to prove that the origins of ancient Egypt comes from black African prehistoric cultures. One of the central points of our, uh, of our uh, book and research so far has been a region called Napta Playa. Uh, you remember we, we talked about this a lot in Egypt when you were there. It's on the border of Sudan. Yes, correct. It is a region that is roughly about 100 kilometers west of Abu Simbel, uh, totally unknown until the late 1970s, when it was discovered by a group of American anthropologists. But it took quite a long time until the, the late 90s, to realize that uh, it was not just a prehistoric site, which there are many, by the way, in the Sahara, but a prehistoric site with a big difference. And that difference is that there is abundant evidence of a culture that performed complex religious ceremonies associated to the sky. One of the centerpieces is a so-called calendar circle, a kind of mini Stonehenge uh, that has been uh, dated to about 6,000 BC. That means about 3,000 years before the construction of pyramids, uh, which has astronomical alignments uh, to the summer solstice and also, as Thomas Brophy has shown, to the constellation of Orion, very much like the great uh, pyramids of the Giza necropolis have. Now, this demonstrates a bit, it's a sort of a bit like the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, when we, we had thought that the, the sayings of Jesus were original to him, uh, and suddenly the Dead Sea Scrolls showed that in fact they weren't, and that uh, may, uh, at least a hundred years before, uh, the very same ideas were being practiced by the Essenes word by word. Well, this is what we're finding in Egypt, except we're finding that what we thought was original to the pyramid builders was in fact practiced by a prehistoric black African culture in the Sahara thousands of years before. Why were Stone Age people then? Well, Stone Age in a sense, because they, they yes, they manipulated stone. Uh, we, we, we see them more as a, uh, what anthropologists call a Neolithic culture, a culture coming out of the Stone Age uh, and settling down and beginning the, the, the very uh, roots uh, that eventually will lead to civilization. For example, uh, the domestication of cattle, the uh, beginning of agriculture, but more importantly, uh, uh, the, the developing of social structures and, and, and the religious ideologies that are the basis of any, uh, any developed culture that, that, that spawns into, into a civilized form. So in a sense, here in the desert, thousands of years before, a black African people uh, literally seeded the very 
uh, seed that would eventually be planted in the Nile Valley by them leaving the desert when it became super arid about 5,000 years ago and moving into the Nile Valley with their cargo of knowledge and kick-starting the pharaonic civilization. So from the rudimentary megalithic ceremonial astronomical sites that we found at Napta Playa eventually leads to the construction of pyramids and temples. So we found the thread, if you like. And this is what this book is going to be about, to literally present this physical evidence. But what's more is now that we realize that this particular culture that centered around the Napta Playa region probably was uh, very much diffused in the Sahara, in the southwest of Egypt, because we found evidence of their presence far, far, far uh, in the southwest, about 700 kilometers from Abu Simbel, uh, on the extreme limits of Egypt, where the borders of Sudan and Libya are encountered, in a very, very mysterious region called Jebel Uwainat and Gilfri Kibir. There, there is an abundance of rock arts, which literally shows us in images painted by the very people, by the very black, mysterious stargazers of Napta, uh, and showing us how they look like. And, and, and they, 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 it's pretty impressive. They, 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 they seem very sophisticated. They, uh, they lived in large communities. They uh, obviously had uh, herded uh, large groups of domesticated animals, uh, cattle in particular, uh, and had begun agriculture. And so there you are. The, the, the missing link, if you like, to the, to the pharaonic civilization and the explanation uh, of how this pharaonic civilization seemed so far to have sprung literally from nowhere, well, it didn't. It seems to have inherited uh, thousands of years of knowledge that was imported by these people uh, into the Nile Valley at about 3,500 BC or so. There must have been sources of water there for it to be a very fertile place. Indeed, and uh, this is the key, in fact, to understand what happened. In prehistoric times, roughly between 20,000 BC and 5,000 BC, the Sahara was a very, very fertile place with ups and downs. There, there, had, uh, there was moments of aridity and moments of fertility. But the last phase of fertility, which lasted roughly between 8,000 BC and, and 3,000 BC, uh, saw the formation of temporary lakes, of uh, huge uh, pastures and prairies, uh, ideal for human habitation, uh, with, with water in abundance, particularly uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the summer season, in the monsoon season. Uh, the water, in fact, came literally from Central Africa, not via the river uh, Nile, which eventually was the case for the, for the Nile Valley, but by the rains, the rains would, in those days, be spread much further north and discharge huge volumes of water in the Sahara, uh, forming these lakes which would last several months and which would, which, which would provide all the necessary water for these uh, prehistoric people to exist. However, uh, the climate changed radically at about 5000 BC or so, and gradually the desert became super arid, impossible to exist. And this is when this prehistoric culture suddenly disappears and when we have at exactly that moment the appearance of the pharaonic civilization. So clearly the twain meet and uh, it is becoming more and more obvious that it is this prehistoric black culture that uh, injected its knowledge into the Nile Valley and caused the pharaonic civilization. Well, we'll look forward to uh, that book being published, Robert. Well, that's the, 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 the broad view of the book. Of course, there's going to be a, a, a lot more in this book because we're going to examine the, uh, the physical cultural connections between the pharaonic civilization and this black uh, prehistoric race. But we're also going to be looking at all the, the, the astronomical sites that we found in the deserts and, uh, and trace them literally from the prehistoric times all the way to the pharaonic civilization. So it's a huge task. Most of the research is done, and the book will be ready to launch uh, in about uh, the, the beginning of winter 2009. Thank you, Robert. It was a pleasure, Fazi.